Salutare, salutare, azi ne vom uita împreună la ultimul videoclip al lui History Legends. Cum? Nu, sună urât. Nu, la cel mai recent videoclip al lui History Legends. Hai că ne vom și distra și ne vom și informa. Bun, ne punem și de luptă și let's go! My friends, Ukraine is set to soon launch its much awaited spring offensive spring and they announced offensive. it pretty publicly. D-Day is believed to be set for late March. D-Day? Ziua Z în română cum ar veni? Adică ce este? Marea debarcare a trupelor ucrainene pe țărmul peninsulei Crimea sau cum nu înțeleg. Ok, hai, o lăsăm așa cum a căzut. Or early April or perhaps a bit late. late. March, chiar că s-a dus, că suntem pe 2 aprilie, cel puțin asta este data la care filmez eu acest videoclip. Deci rămâne aprilie, poate mai, poate n-ar fi rău să specificăm și care este anul, zic doar, nu? Yeah. But thing is, it might fail, or at least delayed and postponed. The idea is to launch a counteroffensive to break the siege of Bahmut before the city falls and activate a new front in the south. By launching a nearly simultaneous offensive towards Crimea through an armed assault in Zaharov. Bă, voi auzi ce spune omul ăsta aici? Deci nu o singură contraofensivă, ci chiar două. Una în direcția Bahmut și una pe la Zaporoje, unde ar trebui cumva să uh, despartă armata sângerosului dictator Vladimir Putin în două. Hei, YouTube! Ai văzut ce frumos am spus-o pe asta? Te rog eu frumos, nu demonetiza acest clip. Mm? Bun, go! Rogia Blast, towards Melitopol and perhaps Berdians, in order to push to the Sea of Azov, coupled with an amphibious landing across the Dnieper from Kherson. I know that these big blue arrow offensives is a turn-on for some, but is this plan? <laughs> is a turn-on? Adică un fel de uh, excitare, ceva de genul, uh? pentru... Slaveți, e ca și cum le-ai arăta o lăcustă crocantă slaveților a? și lăcustarea atunci se turn on. Tare, foarte tare. And realistic. Yeah. <laughs> Throughout the winter, while the Russians were battering the walls of Bahmut, the Ukrainian army received hundreds of armored vehicles from the west, and Ukrainian troops actively trained on these recently delivered NATO grade equipment. Like these M2 Bradleys you can see on screen. These infantry fighting vehicles will advance towards Russian lines protected by dozens of Leopard 2s that will act like a steel fist to punch through steel enemy defenses. Fist. On top of that, some reports claim that Ukraine has been able to train up to 200,000 reservists during the winter. Yet it remains unclear how many of them would be fit for this spring offensive since many of these reservists are simply sent to the front to replace casualties. In this article from the Washington Post that went viral, we're presented with Kupo, a lieutenant colonel of the 46th Air Assault Brigade. He said his battalion is unrecognizable. Of about 500 soldiers, roughly 100 were KIA and another 400 wounded, leading to a complete turnover. Kupo said, sold, sold. I get 100 new soldiers. They don't give me any time to prepare them. They say, take them into the battle. They just drop everything and run. That's it. And for his honest interview, Kupo was immediately demoted from the command of his battalion and labeled as a traitor. Meanwhile, the Asia Times. Deci cum, cum, cum? Doar a fost schimbat de la conducere? Hmm. Hmm? Nici un copacel, nici un scoc așa în jurul lui măcar, nimic. Nici o dispariție, nici o căzătură de la fereastră, nici un ceiuț să Cam otrăvit? A, ah, ok, ok, am înțeles. Astea sunt armele sângerosului dictator Vladimir Putin, desigur. Ok, bun, go! I reported a similar story for another unit. One Ukrainian battalion lost 600 men in January, received 700 replacements and lost 800 men in February. A 60% casualty rate over two months. But as you can imagine, the coming offensive is no secret. Here from the National Post. Ukraine says Russia's Bakhmut assault loses steam. Counter-strike coming soon. Now our beloved CNN. Ukraine eyes an offensive. <laughs> our beloved CNN. Și avem și noi aici în România la Antena 3 aceleași minciuni obosite și insistente și cam nesimțite. Ron Bakhmut. As Russian momentum stalls. 
And that is the entire problem. Everybody knows about it. Even the Uber Eats <laughs> delivery guy told me that Ukraine is waiting for the end of the rain season and mud to launch their counteroffensive against Bakhmut. Same thing happened while I was working out in Dubai. I was debating with some gym bro at the cable machine on whether Ukrainians would attack towards Crimea or towards Bakhmut. Because despite all the copium... Deci toată lumea, toată lumea discută, da, despre mult știuta contraofensivă ucraineană și dezbate fie că este băiatul care livrează mâncarea la ușă, fie că este băiatul care exersează pe o bandă alăturată alături de tine. Tot știu și am, pe la Zaporoje, pe la Bahmut, foarte tare. Mm? <laughs> From the mainstream media, the Russians keep pushing their way into the city and control around 65% mm. of the urban area. Meanwhile, Ukrainians are actively preventing the Russian forces from encircling this. Cum era la mod? Cum își plescăia mâncărica? Insignificant city. They're launching a lot of counterattacks, like in this video, where you can see the assault of the Ukrainian 110th separate mechanized brigade attacking a Russian position through many YPR-675 armored vehicles somewhere near Bakhmut, most likely to the southeast near Ivanivske. Now let's be honest, the reason we're talking about this is because Ukraine still has nostalgia from its fall offensive. Da. We all remember Ukraine's Ofensiva offensive in September 2022. How they broke through how to keep a blast and swept everything in their way within a few days. Chasing down fleeing Russian columns, raising their banner from one village after another, liberating Izium and Kupiansk and reconquering huge swath of land. And this is what Ukraine is trying to... Da. El a fost revelionul slava, toți hosiștii, botiștii și mândruțiștii erau turn on, desigur, de chestiunea asta. Ei uitau să specifice faptul că forțele ucrainene înaintau pe terenul gol părăsit de ruși, în timp ce erau bombardate de ruși. Deci, mm, complicat. În fine, hai. Continuăm, vedem ce se întâmplă la primăvara vară. Repeat in 2023. However, since then, the situation on the front has drastically evolved. The Russian army has grown tremendously in size after calling up 300,000 mobilized personnel, plus about 50,000 from Wagner's recruitment campaigns, as well as thousands of volunteers. Russian propaganda mentioned this 32-year-old teacher from a Cossack military school that enlisted into the ranks with his former students. Or a 63-year-old man from Siberia who is said to have put aside the dumbbells and picked up a rifle. They also said that he asked his 85-year-old mother for permission to go to the front. All this is the... Bă, adevărul e că au și rușii poveștile lor, dar nu sunt atât de gogonate precum borcanele cu murături ucrainene. Ha? Borcane cu murături gogonate înseamnă că în borcane erau gogonele hmm? gogonate și... Murate, desigur. Additional manpower allowed the Russians to ditch the BTG structure and beef up already existing formations with hundreds of infantrymen to man every inch of the front. And all these units are pretty... Da, deci ce au făcut rușii? Au completat niște lipsuri. Ce le lipsea rușilor? Practic în toată campania din 2022, infanteria erau bine echipați din punct de vedere militar, dar nu aveau uh, boots on the ground, da? Și erau rarefiați, de-aia puteau să țâșnească coloanele de contraatac ucrainene, să trezeau ăștia, bă, 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 hai să fugim și noi că au trecut ăștia pe lângă noi. Ok, go. 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 Well, it went after Russia stepped up its military production. At the same time, Russia spent enormous resources to build a dense network of fortifications all along the front line to fend off enemy formations. In other words, Ukraine's spring offensive is not to be confused with spring break. It's not going to be a cakewalk because, number one, if Ukraine benefited from a nearly 5 to 1 advantage in manpower in the late summer 2022, the ratio of military personnel is now closer to parity, nearly 1 to 1. We already... Deci, ați înțeles diferența esențială. După ce rușii și-au completat trupele, nu mai uh, se luptă cu un dezavantaj de 1 la 5. Deci, un rus la 5 ucraineni, ci acum sunt un rus la un ucrainean 
numai că armele au rămas mai multe de partea rusă a trebii, deci ghinion, ok, mult, mult diferită situația. Episodice. În plus, hai că îl mai întrerup o dată, în plus rușii și-au construit și fortificații și așa mai departe, tranșee, etc. Where the Russian army managed to stall the Ukrainian offensive, and more specifically in Crimea, where Ukraine simply wasn't able to break through. Even worse, they, they got pushed back a little. Number two, Russia yeah. knows that Ukraine is about to attack. And that could explain why the Russian army's winter offensive was quite timid. Apart da, aici e interesant, e interesant, păi normal dacă știe și aducătorul de mâncare, că urmează ofensiva ucraineană, o știu și uh, decidenții ruși și au spus, bă, ok, noi suntem cu ofensiva de iarnă, presăm câteva regiuni, însă de fapt și noi așteptăm să vină ăștia peste noi și să, știți, să-i demilitarizăm. Asta era expresia, nu? Apart from Wagner's solo performance in Salidar and Bakhmut, the Russian armed forces only did little push here and there, but nothing major. And this leads me to believe that they wanted to preserve their forces for D-Day by increasing the density of military personnel everywhere along the front and making sure that every unit has enough ammunition. There remains many questions. When exactly is the counteroffensive of the armed forces of Ukraine going to begin? And where will the main strike take place? Number three, take a look at this map. Every red dot represents a geolocated Russian fortified position. And those are only the ones that could be mapped using satellite imagery. All this... Da, deci cum vă spuneam, și-au făcut și fortificații ruși, nu doar că și-au adus trupe suplimentare. Wasn't there in September. Notice how dense the defenses are on the Zaporozhye front line. We can see a first line of defense... Da, deci au întărit regiunea Zaporoje pentru că acolo este chiar câmpie, da? Nu există prea multe obstacole naturale. Și au spus, bă, atunci le facem noi. Facem obstacole artificiale. The many possible minefields in the way. All these defensive Au structures minas, were not there in Kharkiv Oblast when Ukraine launched its offensive. So the situation has drastically changed. Number four, all the Ukrainian units trained for the specific purpose to march on Crimea were sent to hold the ego city of Bahmut, mm. exactly like the Russian hype. Mi-a plăcut, mi-a plăcut cum mi-a spus. Uh, au fost trimise totuși unitățile astea în loc să se adune acolo, se concentreze pentru pregătirea contraofensivei. O parte dintre ele, nu știm cât de mare, a fost trimisă pentru a apăra orașul Igo, da? Ego, Bahmut, tare, foarte tare. Adică, cu alte cuvinte, nu au fost prea raționali, ci s-au lăsat mânați de sentimente, de imensul Igo al micuțului Zelenski, da? Mic la stat, la, dar mare la sfat sau ceva. Şi, o scuzați că am spus chestia asta. O retractez. In command, one, Prigozhin himself stated very bluntly that his forces are now facing the elite of the Ukrainian army. 80.000 military personnel, about 280 tanks, 1,000 armored vehicles, up to 300 pieces of artillery, as well as 93 MRLS systems concentrated in the area of Bahmut. Constantinivka, Slaviansk, Kramatorsk and Rushkovka. Băi, cât de bine sună denumirile astea! Wow! Wow! Said that with this grouping, the Ukrainian command will try to dislodge the PMC assault forces from Bahmut. Știți vorba aici ca limba rusă, adică frumoasă, dar nu, nu înțeleg nimic. Uneori e, e un fel de compliment cu urmă de reproș adresat unei femei. And develop inoffensive towards the Netsk. All this is not a complete surprise because I already told you about it in a previous video. Welcome to History Legends. Here are the latest news of the Russo-Ukrainian War. Remember Bun. Hai să sărim totuși. Hop. Hop. Da. Spune și el. Dați un like. A? Lăsați un comentariu. Sprijiniți-mă pe Patreon. Ceea ce vă rog și eu pe dumneavoastră. Așa. 
după care eventual sunt niște sponsori, dai sărim, dacă nu sunt sponsorii noștri, hai că am trecut la treabă din ce se vede pe ecran. Ia, hop! Effects of surprise or numerical advantage, there are two other ways we can think of. By creating an elite army corps, heavily drilled soldiers, possibly trained in the UK, Poland or Germany or by Western instructors, equipped not with old Soviet equipment, but full NATO gear, like this 3000... O clipă întrerup, adică ne spune că, bă, băiatule, o strategie ar fi ca trupele care sunt pe contraofensivă să fie de elită, foarte bine instruită, eventual în UK sau cine știe pe unde, într-o țară NATO, așa și să beneficieze nu de echipament vechi sovietic, ci de state of the art, the art, NATO equipment, sper că le pronunț cât de cât. Correct. Go. 5 mm AS-90 self-propelled howitzers pledged by the UK to Ukraine. Or all these made in America, M113 APCs, gun-mounted Humvees and Bradley M2 fighting vehicles about to be used by the armed forces of Ukraine. Same thing for these Ukraine paratroopers of the 80th and 82nd Air Assault Brigades, training on American Striker Armored Fighting V. Ce mișto sunt clipurile astea verticale care, în mod normal, m-ar fi enervat. Acum... Super tare, a? că se pot vedea și ele și mă pot vedea și eu. Bun, go! It goes somewhere in Germany. To me, this resembles what the German army did before its 1918 spring offensive. Each German regiment cleaned up its best soldiers into stormtrooper units. Several complete divisions were formed from these elite... Da, nu știu cum să o spun pe asta, da? Acum urmează un fel de... Un fel de paralelă între N, A, Z, I, Ş, T și anume I de ieri și de astăzi. O treabă de asta. Units that underwent heavy specialized infantry training at the rear. Their goal was to break through, disrupt enemy headquarters, destroy artillery units and supply depots in the rear areas as well as to occupy territory rapidly. And this is exactly what Ukraine wants to achieve. But instead of using a 100% infantry force like the Germans did, Ukraine will rely on a fast-moving, mobile armored component. And just like the Germans created new units, Military Land released multiple articles on new Ukraine units formed during the winter. They say the expense calcă pe uh, urmele înaintașilor. Huh? <laughs> of Ukrainian ground forces seems to be unstoppable as new brigades are appearing literally every day. Just like the Germans in 1918, Ukrainians are providing extra training for already enlisted military personnel and training its stormtroopers in combined arms operations, that is how to maneuver armored formations with close coordination with artillery and aerial units. In this article from the 5th of February, Ukraine creates offensive guard brigades. It is said, I quote, In total, the Ministry of Internal Affairs is forming eight assault brigades, and the volunteers can pick the brigade they want to serve in on the website. But when I looked at the name of all these new brigades... Da? Deci se înțelege că voluntarii uh, ar trebui să fie trupe de elită, fie și prim, uh, prisma faptului că își doresc să fie acolo. Ei consideră că asta este lupta lor, deci sunt mai radicali, să le spunem așa, deci, hai! Hai atunci să-i punem la treabă, păi nu? Go! Is that... <laughs> sound strangely familiar to Lord of the Rings characters. I present you with your companion for this epic quest. Borevi, Karadag, Carbona Kalina, Spartan, Rubic, and of course, Azov. On the 21st of February, ground... Putea, putea să lipsească Azov? Ah, no, se Forces putea. continue to expand with the 13th Jäger Brigade. Oh, stați puțin. Dar a mai rămas ceva din Azov? Ah, cred că a mai rămas doar numele, doar că au găsit uh, alți, uh, cum să le spunem, fraieri, da? Care se ducă și să poarte lupta dreaptă, desigur, mai departe. Yeah. A new brigade specialized for forest and swamp land areas, as well as the 22nd and 88th Mechanized Brigade. On the 24th of February, the 5th Assault Regiment is no longer a regiment, but has been reformed into a brigade and will now be known as the 5th Separate Assault Brigade. One day later, on the 25th, the Ukraine Army has decided to form the new 37th and 38th Marine Brigade. The 38th Brigade is being formed on the basis of a well-known 
503rd Marine Battalion. On the 15th of March, we get the 49th Artillery Brigade and the 82nd Air Assault Brigade, formed on the basis of the 87th Separate Air Mobile Battalion of the 80th Air Assault Brigade. And the last one on the 23rd of March, Hartia, originally created as a volunteer unit of the 127th Territorial Defense Brigade, has been reformed into a standalone brigade. Under the offensive guard program. Da, nu știu cât de relevant e să înșire pe ăștia. Pattern in these new units. A lot of these new brigades were formed from battalions or regiments, which are significantly smaller core units. For example, they mentioned how the 38th brigade would be formed out of the core from the 503rd Marine Battalion. A battalion is perhaps 20-25% of the size of the brigade, so where's the 75% remaining? Option 1. The core of these battalions will be made with actual combat veterans and the rest will be filled up with volunteers from other units, aka highly motivated military personnel. Option 2 is that these brigades are only totally da, deci voluntarii sunt foarte motivați. brigades to give the impression of big military formations, but in reality they would be much smaller in size. Anyway, now back. Deci, afară este vopsit gardul, înăuntru este Leopardul, dar e un leopardut mai mititel, da? Dar trebuie să sure fioros, de sigur. To 1918. At first, the German army's offensive was successful. In late March, they wedged right at the junction of British and French armies, causing massive chaos. Their goal was to reach the sea and encircle the British forces. I don't know about you, but sounds familiar. Problem is, because of overuse and allied artillery fire, the elite of the German army got wiped out within two months. And the German army never recovered. And the situation is even more comparable because the Allies and the Germans were almost at parity, one to one. Now the second way Ukraine is thinking of breaking this deadlock is by using new technology. We're talking about the new tanks, the Leopard 2s, the Challengers, the new infantry fighting vehicles, High Mars, but especially drones, lots of drones. And as another historical example, this is very similar to the 1943 Battle of Korsk. In spring 1943, the German High Command believed that new weapons were the key to victory on the Eastern Front, Attention. mainly with the Panzer tank, the Ferdinand tank destroyer, and with more Tiger tanks on the front. So my boy H-Man decided to postpone the operation until the arrival of his new toys, thinking it would allow to compensate for the numerical advantage of the Soviets. And so the Germans prepared this attack for months. However, their preparations did not... Da, deci asta este propaganda. Propaganda, bă, nu ori fi multe, dar sunt bune. Asta spun lăcustarii acum. E, asta spuneau și fraților de um, idei acum 70 de ani sau ceva. Fix același lucru, tot așa avem pisicuțe, numai că atunci pisicuțele erau Tiger, numai că parcă Stalin a spus-o și pe aia că, bă, și cantitatea în sine este o calitate. Go unnoticed. Stalin, Zhukov and even Nikolai, the postman from Vladivostok, knew about it. The Germans essentially have huge neon signs pointing towards course. I will attack, but I will not tell you where. It would be an überraschung, a surprise. So the Soviets came to all the offensive plans for 1943. Pe așa. They brought in massive reinforcements, gave every man a shovel, so they could dig in by building multiple lines of fortifications. Count them. Vedeți similitudinea? Deci la fel au făcut și atunci. Au spus, bă, stai, o lăsăm noi mai încet cu ofensivele noastre și hai să ne pregătim să ne apărăm Că practic toată lumea, inclusiv băieții care se duc și trag de fiare, știu că urmează ofensiva nazistă, da? Și atunci, hai, fiecare să se înarmeze cât o lopată, da? Cum spunea cine? CNN sau BBC, ca așa luptă ușii, mă rog, și au luptat la a-și face fortificații. Plus anti-tank positions and anti-tank ditches and just as many minefields. Everything in the book to wear out German army formations. General Zhukov wanted to draw the elite of German forces into a trap where their armored power would be destroyed, thus creating the conditions for a major Soviet counteroffensive. Spoiler alert! Does this not remind you of what's going on now? And surprise, surprise! surprise. The Russians have brought in 
Surprise, surprise! They're brand new T90 M tank units closer to the front. Oh, oh, Even more interesting was reported that Russian army forces sent reinforcements that took up positions on the northern and southern flanks of the Wagnerians, among which many paratrooper regiments known for their expertise in defense to sustain the shock of the Ukrainian counteroffensive. Wasniani Kontranastov. The spring counteroffensive. Like we mentioned earlier, the big question is where will the main thrust take place? To get the proper answer, we have to gather up all the clues. Meanwhile, in other theories. Da, așa sunt pro ăștia. În general, băieți deștepți, da, și cultivați. That Ukraine is going to make heavy use of its Leopard 2 tanks for their general offensive. According to this other Forbes article, the Leopards will be attached to the 4th Ukrainian Tank Brigade. It says 40 tanks could equip one large battalion or two small ones. It would make logistical sense to Tot assign all 40 Leopard 2A4s to the Tot same brigade. Long. They say that the 4th Tank Brigade is transitioning one of its battalions at the rear to be fully equipped with Leopard 2 tanks, while the other battalions are fighting near Bahmut. Did you hear? Bah, mood. And using the deployment map, we can confirm that the 4th Tank Brigade is positioned somewhere west of Salidar. Clue number two. Take a look at Ukraine's dwarf named offensive brigades. Azov Brigade is positioned in Bilaura, Poryevi near Siversk, Spartan in Bahmut, Rubij near Chasivyar, and Chervona Kalina in Spirne. Five out of the six offensive guard brigades are positioned around Bahmut. As you can see, the Leopard Tank Battalion and all these offensive guard brigades are in a perfect position to flank Wagner's salient north of Bahmut. Clue number three. We can see that the highest concentration of Ukrainian artillery units is in Bahmut, with namely five out of 12 artillery brigades deployed along the front positioned around Bahmut. That's basically 50% of all the artillery Ukraine has available. Now, the only problem related to this was revealed in this article from the BBC. No Ukrainian offensive without more weapons from Zelensky, where he claimed we're waiting for ammunition to arrive from our partners. You no, have as it's... much artillery as you want, but if you don't have ammunition, it's going to be complicated. So yeah. if the Ukrainians are actively preparing an offensive, it would make sense to reduce the artillery consumption as of now to stack up as much as possible for D-Day. Clue number four, the death of the 27-year-old famous commander of the 1st Mechanized Battalion with the call sign Da Vinci, as part of the Ukrainian yeah. 67th Brigade. Yeah, this brigade yeah. is one of the newest units created by Kiev, formed in November 2022. And on Wikipedia, we learn the following. The Ukrainian Volunteer Corps, or the paramilitary arm of right-wing Ukrainian Nationalist Party, was reformed as the 67th Separate Mechanized Brigade and were training in the United Kingdom. Videos surfaced on social media claiming that the 2nd Battalion of the 67th Brigade were honing in their anti-tank skills. And in this Twitter post, we learned that the British donated FB-103 Spartan reconnaissance vehicles made their appearance in a video from the Ukrainian 67th Mechanized Brigade. The video says, with a top speed of 60 miles per hour and room for seven, it's easy to see why Ukraine forces would covet that kind of armored mobility. Let's put all the pieces of the puzzle together. The 67th Mechanized Brigade recently put together with highly motivated volunteers, trained in Britain, fully geared with British military equipment. This is clearly a unit meant for offensive operations. And once again, it is located near Bahmut. Gen, if it uh, walks like a duck and cocks, sau cum se spune, like a duck, it must be a Good. duck. However, instead of being kept in reserve for this big offensive, the 67th Brigade has already gone through the meat grinder. They lost a very good Da Vinci Battalion commander, and on March 11th, on the Facebook page of the 67th Brigade, they posted the following. Friends, it's very hot here. Almost all the equipment is broken. We desperately need to purchase a large number of drones. It gets even more interesting if you check the edit history of the post. <laughs> so it that pe the uh, editarea postări, da? Că au spus o nasol de tot, pormă și au dat seama că, bă, stai, prea ne-am scăpat cu adevărul și au mai îndulcit pilula. Ia să vedem. Post, which says, friends, we have very large and serious losses, many KIA, but someone Remove that line. So everything points towards an imminent Ukrainian offensive against Bahmut. And this could explain why the Wagner PMC has stalled its own advance north of the city. To no, stop, stop, stop. Păi nu se jura pe carne de porc 
ăsta, Radu Hosu, nu spunea el, el spune așa, la sfârșit de februarie, început de martie, va avea loc contraofensiva ucraineană și va fi pe la Zaporoj. Februarie a trecut, greșit. Marte a trecut, greșit. Zaporoje nu, greșit. Iarăși greșit. Ce facem analistul, expertule? Aha. Minciunește în jurnalul de noapte sau cum se numește pseudo-rubrica aia ta de informare pe subiect? Le ca minciunești, se pare. A? Sau ești un habarbist și atât. Eu cred că ești mai degrabă un habarbist. Mm-hmm. Concentrate its forces in actually capturing the urban area of Bahmut. I personally think that an amphibious assault across the Dnieper will not be the primary assault of the Ukrainian armed forces. Simply by looking at this map, we see that four out of five Ukrainian brigades deployed in Kherson are territorial defense units. Mm-hmm. These are second-rate units and they're uh, ill-equipped uh, for that uh, task. They need a lot of boats and naval equipment. And even if they manage to cross over, they would have to face heavily fortified positions. All these territorial brigades can do is to pin down a number of <coughs> Russian forces and prevent the transfer of reserves towards the Zaporozhye sector. Which leads us to this. One of the first hints is revealed to us in this Forbes article. The Ukraine army is probing Russian lines in the sub and suffering heavy losses. They say, I quote, Many observers expect the counteroffensive to begin in Zaporozhye Oblast in southern Ukraine. Mulți experți, including Radu Hos. A left hook from Zaporozhye driving south toward the Black Sea, then pivoting west towards the mouth of the Dnieper River, could cut the Russian army in two and position the Ukraine army for an eventual liberation of the Crimean Peninsula. This task was given to the 128th Mountain Brigade, and by using the deployment map of military land, we can confirm the presence of this Mountain Brigade in the south, which has been escalating its recon operations with large-scale probes of Russian positions along the Zaporozhye front. Now, using Defense Politics Asia's map, we see that on the 15th of March, Ukraine forces did attack several positions out of the town of Parikhiv. We're talking about company-sized attacks, at most 100 men, supported by multiple armored fighting vehicles. We're talking about company-sized units, max 100 men, supported by multiple armored vehicles. But here you can see the results of Atenție, atenție la faza asta, eu am râs, da? Ia sărit puțin placa, dacă să vedeți uh, cum montează, pe ce bucățele mici. Aici e vorba de câteva secunde care se repetă. Ia, atenție. We're talking about company-sized attacks, at most 100 men, supported by multiple armored fighting vehicles. Și? We're talking about company-sized units. Dubla 2. Man supported by multiple armored vehicles. But here you can see... <laughs> vă ridic mâinile doar așa ca să vă arăt că nu derulez eu sau ceva. A? Tare. M-a distrat această mică eroare. Am și comentat la el acolo. The results of these latest probing attacks. Meanwhile, Reddit that is known to be very pro-Ukrainian even admitted that these recommissions did not end well. The title says, Feel with burning Ukrainian armor. MK and wounded soldiers after a failed Ukrainian attack. You can clearly see the amount of destroyed vehicles and the surviving Ukrainian infantrymen laying flat in the open terrain. So Same actually. scenario in this video titled More footage of yesterday's battle in the Zaporozhye region from the observation post. Ia, yeah, uitați-vă, vedeți cum e terenul acolo? Bă, băiatul, le zici că e mare. Așa de plat este. Hmm? The 201st Regiment of the Russian Armed Forces. As you can see, this is the problem with the southern front of Ukraine. It's pure flat terrain with barely any cover for the advancing infantry. Fix. Essentially, this seems very similar to the costly frontal attacks Ukrainians launched in Kherson Oblast. And this time there's no river or bridges to destroy to stall Russian logistics. Forbes revealed that apparently Ukrainian artillery was not able to suppress enemy guns, leaving the armored vehicles and their infantry fully exposed in the open terrain. And by analyzing this deployment map, I don't see the proper density of Ukrainian forces necessary to break through. With that being said, there are two Ukrainian tank brigades that could rapidly deploy to the main attack point, a day prior to the offensive. Same goes with these two mechanized brigades. On top of that, if we return to the fortifications map, The strongest Russian defenses are positioned around Orihiv. Look at everything they have to go through to get to Crimea. First, they have Ia to break through the first two lines of defenses. Două then they have to capture Tukmak and then Melitopol. It's going un to oraș, be very complicated. 
especially if these Russian positions are heavy. <laughs> și, și asta este nimic pe lângă cât de greu e că, ok, ai ajuns lângă Crimea, dar e mai greu să pătrunzi pe acolo, da? Ca e practic o limbă îngustă de pământ pe unde să pătrunzi și aia este fortificată de ruși, da? Și cea la vest, e, nu știu, câteva mile lățime și la est sunt niște mlaști în care pot fi sau nu pot fi trecute în funcție de sezon și de ce echipamente vrei să treci pe acolo, că atacul crimei dinspre uh, mare nu cred că se poate, că nu au eroi, da, nu au nave de război, da, sau de desant. Heavily man. The sectors of the front are the least defended are here and here. And surprise surprise, this is exactly where Ukraine launched its probing attacks on the Russian positions. During their offensive, Ukrainian troops might take the path of least resistance and actually manage to break through in the sector that seems less defended. But it will also push them east and divert them from the main objectives they want to capture and possibly lead them into a flight forward scenario straight towards a prepared fire back. And while worse... Uh-huh. Se trezească, îi lasă să străpungă și, pe urmă, îi încercuiesc. Hai să vedem capcană rusească, desigur. It's, that it's not a surprise that the Russians launched their own probing attacks a few weeks ago against Orihiv. They clearly knew that something was up and that something would start from there. Something is up. Which the Russian offensive against Vrhletar was meant to stall Ukrainian plans and cover the road leading directly towards Mariupol. Now, because the date and the location of the offensive is known, the general staff of the Ukrainian armed forces is preparing UAV shock companies for each brigade that will guide artillery fire. Entire flight schools have now been created to teach how to properly use reconnaissance and combat drones in order to inflict maximum damage during an attack. On top of reconnaissance drones, Ukraine is said to have bought 50,000 FPV drones from China. Wow. And they upgraded these commercial drones by attaching frag grenades or... <laughs> tocmai, tocmai voiam să cer chila. Ce faceți, bă, înarmați pe eroi? A? Nu. Erau drone comerciale pe care, pe urmă, eroii le-au adaptat în scopuri mai puțin comerciale. RPG-7. With the intention to use these kamikaze drones to swarm Russian positions. Just like in this old yeah. Call of Duty, if you remember. Radu Tudor, vino și comentează scenariul de război. Defense capabilities, knockout headquarters, command centers, artillery pieces and hunt down individual soldiers. This new tactic poses a real threat to the Russian army because to counter it they need a large number of electronic warfare equipment to suppress all these communication channels and put simply the Russians don't have enough of them. Now imagine if the Ukrainians release 10,000 of these kamikaze drones on the first day of the offensive and yeah. if only one in five reach their targets. We're still talking about 2,000 hits. So that's the situation on the southern front. That's all I have for you today. Let me know in the comment section what you thought of my analysis. If you're new to this channel, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you want to support... Și același lucru vi-l comunic și eu, da? Dacă sunteți noi, să vă abonați la canalul Noaptea Minții, da? Dați un like, vă aștept și la comentarii și care doriți, eventual puteți deveni membri ai canalului Noaptea Minții. Ok, până data viitoare, haide și anume, papa. Pa.